There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, said the Lord, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Elijah was running away from King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Hid in a cave and we heard the story. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just bless your name. We thank you for Elijah and the prophets of old. We just ask that their stories bless us today. In the name of the Lord. The title of my sermon this morning is You Are Not Alone, Stand Firm. You know, there's a day coming soon when each of us will need to take a hard personal stand and make some choices if you haven't done so already. Choices like, does man set the standard for morality or does God? Your personal conviction, if you choose God, and I pray that you do, will ultimately cause you to be scorned, ridiculed, branded as intolerant, or maybe even worse. Are you? Will you be able to withstand the tsunami that is sure to overwhelm you? Ephesians 6.13, that tsunami is described for us as the day of evil. And that verse in the following, verse 14, tells us to stand your ground to stand firm. So are your feet firmly planted in the Lord? You know, my whole Christian life has been about building my spiritual house on the solid rock of Jesus, not on the sinking ground of foolishness and false teachings. In today's world, I'm beginning to feel like my rock is a mile high as the sinking sand sinks ever lower, even to greater depths than ever I could have imagined. Not only is my rock a mile higher than the sand below, it's becoming more and more lonely as the world sinks into the abyss. There's an old saying, it's lonely at the top. And so it is for some of us today, and so it was for Elijah a long time ago. He chose the high road to obey all that God had commanded and asked of him. As all of Israel sank to greater levels of depravity, as Elijah stood his ground on the solid rock of his Jehovah God, he too felt alone, he felt lonely. 
And believing he was the only believer left in all of Israel, we hear his lament in 1 Kings 19, verse 10. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Hang on, Elijah. Hang on. Now, if you're feeling like you're the only believer left, the only one standing on righteous ground, hang on. Hang on, because as God might say, there's a lot of love between us. Here's the truth that we all know. There's a lot of living that takes place before heaven. We all experience heartaches. We all experience sorrows in our lives. We all go through deep and turbulent waters. And sometimes the night sky is so dark, we see no light, no star in the sky. At some point in our lives, we all have and we will experience, as did Jesus, a Gethsemane moment, a time of loneliness, a time of abandonment. It is in those moments that we need to feel the presence of the Lord. His presence is no theory, no conjecture. People, the presence of the Lord is a fact. How many of us haven't sat alone, just like Elijah, thinking to ourselves, nobody loves me, I guess I'll go eat worms. All of us have those Eeyore, Winnie the Pooh moments. Elijah was all alone on the mountain and he was feeling sorry for himself. And then the suddenly, the Lord was right there with him. And then in 1 Kings 19, we hear the Lord and we read, The Lord said, Go and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Did you catch that? The Lord is about to pass by. So we continue. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. The Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. God's presence is real. He is passing by. Even at this moment. We just need to open our eyes. Open our ears and our hearts. Elijah curled up into a ball. Lamenting. Woe is me. And then God shows up. And asks. What are you doing here Elijah? And again we hear Elijah. Reply to the Lord. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. There are days, i got to tell you, that I feel a lot like Elijah. Am I the only one left? But it is then that the Lord's presence manifests, makes itself obvious, even as he did to Elijah. As he told Elijah in verse 18 of 1 Kings 19. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all those mouths have not kissed him. Hey, Elijah, there's a remnant of 7,000 who are not bowing down to Baal. Hey, Christian of today, hey, people of First Covenant Church, there is a remnant across the land who do not bow to man's depraved morality. You are not alone. Hang in there. Baal was a false god, an idol the people of Israel worship. Today Baal is still worship, but in a more sinister way. When the culture rejects God's morality and worships his own morality, man has exalted himself above God and gives reverence and gives worship to his own man-made idols. When we as Christians recite biblical authority to persuade those who have rejected God and have set up their own higher authority, 
they often slap us down, don't they? You see, God to them is irrelevant. Never fall prey to satanic reasoning. That is all too often very, very convincing. Remember always what the Lord says in Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thought higher than yours. If somebody tells you that the Bible doesn't fit into the world today, don't you be believing them. In all actuality, the world just doesn't fit into the Bible. You are not alone when you take that stand. God is with you. Here's an example of God being with you. It comes from, again, the book of Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6. And we find the prophet Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha. And when the Bible tells us that Israel is at war with King Aram, which is modern day Syria. And God speaks to Elisha, and Elisha then knows the plans of King Aram, Syria. And then Elisha tells the Israeli army. Well, the king of Aram decides that he needs to eliminate Elisha, and he finds out that he and his servant are in the city of Dothan. And then at night, the king of Aram and his whole army surround that little village. And in the morning, Elisha's servant wakes up and he looks out the window and he sees their hopeless plight. And we hear his cry in 2 Kings chapter 6. What shall we do? Can you not hear the desperation in his voice? An entire army up against two men, Elisha and his servant. And even so, the army is outnumbered. The servant saw the army, and he was defeated at the start. A trap that we should not fall into. Elijah thought he was all alone, and God rescued him. The servant thought he was all alone against such a vast number, and death was surely at hand. Kind of sounds like Elijah's cry. I'm all alone. And then Elisha comes to the window. His servant only saw the army surrounding them. Hear now what Elisha saw and what he said to his servant. I love this scene. You just gotta love it. He said, Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so that he might see. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Elisha saw not the enemy, but he saw God. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Pray for those who soldier alone, who are sick, that their eyes might be opened. In your hour of darkness, if only you could see the horses and chariots of fire all about you. When you think you're all alone, you are not. God's presence is always there. Ask Him to open your eyes. When the enemy sails against you, take comfort in not only knowing this biblical story about Elisha and his servant, but the teaching of Paul in Romans 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? Is it dark in your soul? Are you afraid? In those hours of darkness, in those hours of fear, it is then that you must be obedient to God. In those times of desperation, God's everlasting arms 
they will catch you. Pray that your eyes can behold, see the mercy, the grace, the chariots and the horses of fire that God has prepared just for each one of you. And with a contrite heart and a humble spirit, be ushered into the presence of the Lord. Because the Lord, even now, is passing by. Take courage. Have hope in God's promise from Deuteronomy. Be strong and courageous, says the Lord. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. With God, you are never alone. Sometimes, though, it is in those moments of hopelessness that God can use you the most. You might not know the reason, the why your world is changing, maybe your world is falling apart, even why you might be at this time in your life all alone, but God knows. We hear this from God in Jeremiah 19. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Even if you are all alone, God has a plan for you. God has a hope for you. Moses was all alone in the land of Midian, shepherding a bunch of sheep. From the prince of Egypt to a lonely shepherd. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Now Moses could have curled up into a ball and cried out, Woe is me! But when God came a knocking, he was obedient. He surely didn't know what lie ahead. Moses wouldn't have gone back to Egypt as deliverer if he had known the troubles that he would soon encounter. He just went. He didn't understand all that God expected. He just obeyed. Moses didn't understand. And sometimes we don't understand God's plan for us either. Elijah certainly did not. But understanding isn't the important thing here. It's about obeying the voice, the word of the Lord. Before any miracle even took place, Elijah was obedient. The same with Elijah or Elisha, Moses, and the other prophets of old. As for you, as for me, never underestimate the power of God when you are obedient to the Word. 2 John 1 says, And this is love, that we walk in obedience to His commands. Even when you're down and out, know that God still loves you. Give Him time to show up. He is there at the beginning, and He is there at the end. Never forget, we've got a just-in-time God. Just in time, you will see the glory of the Lord. I started out by saying, though we as Christians might feel all alone, the fact of the matter is, we are not. The moral standards of man has and will continue to sink to lower levels of depravity. Take heart and hear the words of Jesus in Matthew 28. Surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Even though Christ promises to always be with us, He did warn us of these days of trouble. In John 16, we hear Jesus say, In this world you will have trouble. But though trouble and tribulation abound, we as believers in Jesus, though seemingly fewer and fewer, we are not alone. In God's eyes, in this time in history, we are basically in a favored position. In Romans 11 we read, So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. When Elijah thought he was all alone, God revealed to him that there was a remnant of 7,000. 
7,000 standing there with him. In today's world, there's a remnant who stand with us. We are not alone. So if you're wondering why all the world seems to be abandoning the truth of Jesus, let me read you Romans 11, verse 8. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes so they could not see, and ears so they could not hear to this very day. God's chariots and horses of fire could be all around, and they would not see. We can preach the gospel of truth of Jesus Christ crucified and Jesus Christ risen, and they will not hear. Should that stop us as Christians from pointing out the grace of God? Should that stop us from preaching the word of God? Well, the, the word or the answer is simply this. No, we must continue to preach the word of the Lord. We are to pray as Elisha prayed for his servant who could not see God's presence right in front of his face. Open their eyes. Lord, that they might see. When you think that you're all alone, you are not. Stand firm and see what the Lord will do for you even this day. Amen. Let's pray.